So I've definitely built cages in the past, but nothing kind of like this where it's gonna be a mostly screen design. If you've seen some of my older videos from last summer, you'll see that Doom was in a completely custom enclosure, which unfortunately he doesn't have anymore. So I'll be building him a new enclosure later this year. Um, and I was also working on those two arboreal tree snake enclosures, which I ended up selling to my buddy who uh, bought my Amazon tree bow off of me as well. Um, and that all came with the apartment downside. So I do have some experience building cages, um, but to be honest, those cages were complete shit. So I really, when cutting this wood, took my time to make sure every piece was the exact same length. So all of the 48 inch pieces were 48 inches exactly. And all of the 36 inch pieces were 36 inches exactly. And that's something where I didn't do last time. I just kind of rushed through the build. Um, so yeah, first things first, you're gonna wanna decide how big you're gonna need your cage. I'm planning on putting my newly hatched or you know three month old panther chameleon in a full adult size cage just because I don't want to deal with moving it in and out and the chameleon's gonna love having a mansion for the first part of his life and then he'll be able to grow into it and figure out all of his surroundings uh, and I think it'll be really cool to see him a tiny little chameleon explore his whole you know huge cage sometimes they say huge after you have figured out how big you want your cage you need to go buy your wood and select your wood I wanted to use something that was relatively thin because I still wanted the cage to be very light for cleaning and taking it down from the mounting point that it's gonna be up over here. Um, and I also wanted a wood that was relatively hard, uh, usually because thin wood when it's thin and if it's soft, it splits easy and I just, I didn't wanna deal with that. Pick out your wood, get your wood cut. You can either get it cut at the home improvement store that you buy your wood from, which I wouldn't recommend just because I had them cut the cages, or the I had them cut the wood for the cages last summer, and that's why they mainly came shitty and all screwed up and lopsided and wonky was basically because the Lowe's doesn't know how to cut wood. Instead, I got myself a fancy little, oh, I wanted to show off and be cool. Myself a fancy jigsaw, which does kind of make some wobbly cuts. But I've got something for that. Once you get all of your cuts roughly cut out, then you level the one side that's like already pre-cut from the factory and make sure that's all nice and level. And then you would be able to tape off around them all and take a, a palm sander or a file down to this until this looks almost identical to this side over here. And boom, you got yourself a nice piece of wood. And Lowe's didn't screw you over while doing it. Thanks, Lowe's. You got your wood cut. So then you want to lay out panel by panel how the walls of your cage are gonna sit on the ground. And I'll do that here in a minute, um, but you'll see it now because I'm just gonna overlay that footage on top of this footage so that we don't have like a 30 minute video of me building a cage. Okay, cool. So you line up all the things, you make sure that the the angles on them are nice and right, you know, 90 degrees, you know, keep it 90. That wasn't as cool as I thought it was gonna be. Once they're all laid out, then you get some nice wood glue. I went with this cement stuff by Dip. Put the wood glue in between the intersecting points of the wood. Let that sit for like, I don't know, an hour just to be safe, I'd say. And then, uh, and then we can move on to the next step. As I said earlier, I don't want to have to deal with splitting wood. It's one of the biggest downfalls to building a cage for your reptiles is when the wood splits because then it looks ugly and it shifts everything off balance. So I decided to use the combination of that wood glue and I picked up myself a fancy staple gun. Hasta la vista. And we just staple the intersecting pieces that we just glued together um, with like six staples on each side and um, pray to the lizard gods that it holds up. Now that you have all of the individual panels of each of the walls put together, you can start assembling those panels together in pretty much the same process that you um, made the panels. You just glue, lots of glue, and staples, lots of staples. Lots of staples. 
Magically with the power of editing, I got a lot of the cage done here. Really the next step after getting the whole frame together is applying the screening on the sides and the top. I did four of my sides screened and I'm gonna do the front side of my cage in plexiglass. So applying the screen was pretty easy. I just laid a amount of screen on the side that I wanted, stapled a few of the edges down and trimmed around it and yeah. I did that for four of those sides. Don't mind me, saw something that needed to be fixed real quick. Honestly, the hardest part about this whole thing was putting the screen on the cage because like it comes in this roll like this and trying to get it out and to stay flat without springing back up is damn near impossible. So once you figure out a way past that, it's pretty easy, but yeah, just make sure you have enough screen for what you're wanting to do, because if not, you'll have to do a little box job like I did. Uh. But I'm not gonna show you that, because then that'd make me look bad. Now the last thing really to do uh, building the cage-wise is to measure out the frame of the front door for your enclosure. <coughs> and to cut it. The dimensions of your door will be roughly the same size as the dimensions of the front of your cage. Just depending on the size and the thickness of the wood that you got, you'll want to scale it down either a half an inch or a full inch. Uh, again, just depending on the thickness of the wood that you got. Once your wood's all measured out for the front of your door, send your jigsaw through it. Alright, so I'm sitting here editing this video and right after I edited that clip, I went to go cut the wood and turns out I didn't have enough wood. So we'll be making the door for the cage next episode, but here's the steps to do it in this episode. And use the exact same step of making sure everything is even that we did with the rest of the cage. If you need reference, just scroll back like four minutes, you know. Now we need to paint the exterior of the cage, something I still haven't done yet, but you're still gonna see it right now because like editing, Editing's beautiful. So you'll also notice that I painted over the top of the screen, which was a big mistake, but it turned out to end up looking okay. Resume with the instructions. And I'm just painting the edge of it black so that everything looks real nice and clean when it's all said and done. And yeah, that's, that's really how I made the frame of the soon-to-be panther chameleon cage. It was pretty simple. It did take me a couple of days, probably four or five, but not because it's a lengthy process per se, but just more because I'm busy. Um, so if you have a whole day where you're not doing anything, you could probably get it done in about six, seven hours. I'd, I'd say that's a good, a good hour scale for it. If you guys liked today's video, please give it a like because you know I need those kinds of things. And stay tuned for next week's video when we actually scape the inside of this cage and plant it and make it look marvelous. See you then.